overflows regular sex versus tantric sex excitement has to be used for both in the beginning that is why i say in the beginning both are same but the ends are totally different because of this reason it is rough breaking phase when the peak experience through normal sex is so difficult then it is impossible for anyone to attain to valley orgasm excitement has to be used for both either you are going towards the peak of excitement or to the valley of relaxation the peak is excitement and valley is relaxation so the two are very important excitement and relaxation for the first excitement has to be intense more and more intense you have to grow in it you have to help it to grow towards the peak in the second excitement is just a beginning and once the man has entered both lover and beloved can relax no movement is necessary they can relax in a loving embrace when the man feels or the woman feels that the erection is going to be lost only then a little movement or excitement is required but then again relax you can do it again and again you can prolong this deep embrace for hours without any release of energy and then both can fall into deep sleep together this is valley orgasm both are relaxed and they meet as two relaxed beings at this stage you have entered the peak holding phase these are very important to understand the tantric sex and go into it for better relaxation in the ordinary sexual orgasm you meet as two excited beings tense and full of excitement trying to unburden yourself the ordinary sexual orgasm looks like madness the tantric orgasm is a deep relaxing meditation then there is no question of how often one should indulge you can indulge as much as you like because no energy is lost rather energy is gained this phase is fine breaking phase you may not be aware of it but this is the fact of biology of bioenergy that men and women are opposite forces negative positive yin and yang shiva and shakti or whatsoever you may call them they are challenging to one to each other and when they both meet in a deep relaxation they revitalize each other they both revitalize each other they both become generators both feel livelier and become radiant with new energy and nothing is lost just by meeting with the opposite pole energy is renewed this is known as terminal detection phase you have seen light beyond the tunnel there is an auric field of energy around both as one organism the tantric love act can be done as many times as you like the ordinary sex act cannot be done as much as you like because you are losing energy through it and your body will have to wait again to regain it and when you regain it you will only lose it again this looks absurd the whole life is spent in gaining and losing regaining and losing it is just like an obsession the second thing that you have to remember you may or may not have observed that when you look at animals you never see them enjoying sex in intercourse 
they are not enjoying themselves. Look at the baboons, monkeys, dogs or any other animal. In their sex act, you cannot see that they are feeling blissful or enjoying it. Certainly you cannot. It seems to be just a mechanical act. There is natural force pushing them towards it. If you have seen monkeys in intercourse, after the intercourse they will separate. Look at their faces. There is no ecstasy in them. Look at their... The, the, it is as if nothing has happened when the energy forces itself when the energy is too much they throw it this is how the ordinary sex act is and we get obsessed with it the ordinary sex act is just like this but moralists have been saying quite the contrary they say do not indulge do not enjoy they say this is as animals do. This is wrong. Animals never enjoy. Only man enjoys sex. And the deeper you can enjoy, the higher is the kind of humanity that is born. And if you, if your sex act can become meditative or ecstatic, the highest is touched. But remember, Tantra, this is the valley orgasm, a state of orgasm when the two bodies and the consciousness is totally relaxed, not excitement, when you are waiting for the orgasm to happen. It is not a peak experience, instead it is a valley experience. In the West, Abraham Maslow has introduced this term peak experience very famous. You go into excitement towards the peak and then you feel. That is why after every sex act you feel a fall and it is natural. You are fa falling from the hill. You will never feel that after a tantric sex experience then you are not falling. You cannot fall any further because you have been in the valley, rather you are rising. When you come back after a tantric sex act, you have risen, not fallen. You feel filled with energy, more vital, more alive, more radiant. And that ecstasy will last for hours, even for days. It depends on how deeply you were in it, how meditative you were in the act. If you move into it, sooner or later you will realize that ejaculation is wastage of energy. There is no need of it unless you need children. And with a tantric sex experience, you will feel a deep relaxation the whole day. One tantric sex experience and even after days you will feel blissful and relaxed at home, non-violent, non-angry, non-depressed and this type of person is never, never a danger to others. If he can, he will help others to be happy. If he cannot at least he will not make anyone unhappy. The, if you happen to experience this kind of a tantric sex, your life will transform because the energy that you are feeling during the excitement or saying that um, the, you can uh, the, create the arousal in the person, you are not wasting that energy. Instead, all that energy is being conserved to revitalize you. Only Tantra can create new man. Indeed, this is the man 
who can know the state of timelessness, egolessness and deep oneness with existence. In him, cosmic oneness will grow, a dimension has opened, it is not far away, the day is not very far away when sex will simply disappear. When it disappears without and when it disappears without your knowledge, when suddenly one day you realize that sex has disappeared completely and there is no lust, then celibacy is born. But this is arduous. It looks arduous because of too much false teachings and you feel afraid of it also because of your mind's conditionings of two things we are very much afraid sex and death and both are basic a really religious seeker will enter both he will experience sex to know what it is because to know sex is to know life and he would also like to know what death is because unless you know death unless death is known you cannot know what life eternal is if you can enter sex to its very center you will know what life is and if you can enter into death voluntarily to its very center then the moment will touch the center of death you become eternal and this is the purpose of meditation then you are immoral then you are immortal because death is something that happens just on the periphery sex and death both are basic for a real seeker but for ordinary human being both are taboo no one talks about them both are basic and both are deeply related to one another they are so deeply interrelated that even upon entering sex you enter a certain type of death because you are dying the ego is disappearing time too is disappearing and your individuality is disappearing you are dying sex is also a subtle death and if you can know that sex is a subtle death death can become a great sexual orgasm a socrates embracing death is not afraid rather he is very much enthusiastic thrilled excited to know what death is there is a deep welcome in his heart why because if you have known a small death death moments through sex and you have known the bliss that follows it then you would like to know the greater death the greater bliss that is hidden behind it but for us both are taboo for tantra both are basic dimensions of for search one has to go through them enough for now